But anyway, speaking of coming and going. <laughs> no, I'm serious. What the hell are you transitioning to I'm, now? I'm speaking <laughs> well of coming and going, some people come into your life and some people go out of your life. And there's been a weasel lately that's gone out of our life named Colin Thompson that we've been talking about. Usually you're about halfway up his ass with some barbed wire with him but i just i've actually unfortunately, had, unfortunately at this point we're standing in line uh well yeah yeah it's it's and the 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 billy club and the brass knucks and the slapjack and the coat hanger it's a lot of people but i've had a few of the cult members contact me and just make comments they don't know for sure people's business but we were you know when we were talking about colin thompson by the way who is the Weasel, the CEO of Cast Media, now the only employee of Cast Media since his employees are in a class action suit against him and the rest of them have resigned and threatened to sue him to get out of their contract so that they can actually be free to make a living. He's the only one at Cast Media, but he's the one that's trying to do the stock scam, perpetrating fraud with old Rob Ellen, the weasel who's the CEO of Live One slash Podcast One that we've been talking about on the programs here recently. He's a mook. The mook. But, you know, we've said that we're not the only ones affected. There's the the mom and pop podcasters that, you know, were setting themselves up to try to have a little income so they could take care of sick family members or you know, during the pandemic, for whatever reason, they needed to change occupations or, you know, some small folks that can't bear these losses. But there's big names that are apparently tied up in this also. Now, we we don't know their business, but we can assume and presume based on things that we do know. Sarah Silverman, she's a fine young comedian. And she's a name that a lot of people might recognize. She had a podcast tied up in some form or fashion with cast media. And Brian, would you know the the fans have told me that she hasn't had a new podcast out in about two months now. That seems awful because it was fairly regular right before that every week or so. And then bam, nothing. If a big name celebrity like Sarah Silverman can be derailed and inconvenienced by this weasel and his mook friend. Well, that's, you know, if, if, of course, now, if Sarah wants to come on the program and tell us that there maybe she's just been taking a vacation, but, you know, we don't know this to be true, but a lot of people saying it, that there's problems with cast media. And, you know, Penn Gillette, Brian, you know him. Penn yeah. and Teller, the magicians, right? I've always really liked them, yeah. I always said Teller is the one that don't talk. That's always been a tickle of mine. But old Penn Gillette, he lost a lot of weight. He used to be a bigger fella. He That's used right. to be a big motherfucker, as Rick Ross would say. And now he's in good shape, and he's always uh, done interesting things, and he's had a weird record label, so an interesting guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, he used to have a podcast tied up in some way with cast media, but apparently now his fans are telling me he's just on Patreon, doing his own thing. Apparently his podcast has been derailed. Maybe it's one of those deals where Colin or Cast Media owned his feed and he couldn't get away from them, or he maybe he couldn't afford to do the show anymore because he wasn't getting paid for all the advertising he had done. He's just gone over to Patreon, just run, run off the podcasting planet. Now, we don't know this to be a fact, but it sure is odd that all these people, that, whether they be small independent operators or whether they be names that you would know all of a sudden everybody was tied up with cast media <laughs> off the air off the airwaves except for us and except for the fact that we're saying this not a lot of other people are able to do this they're apparently their hands are legally tied but it's a shame that uh all these shows that have all these listeners and all these fans, they can't get serviced anymore because of this weasel and this fraud that he's trying to perpetrate, whatever it may be, allegedly, with Live One and this IPO, what is it, initial public offering? That's right. See there, I know all these terms. Very good. Stock in a, if not 
worthless, highly suspect company. And I just wanted to, again, remind everybody, this is not just about wrestling. It's not just about podcasting. It's about people in front of our faces trying to get away with something. And Colin and Rob, I say again, we have been saying this in front of hundreds of thousands, by now millions of people, out loud. You can check the views on the YouTube channel if you can't get statistics on podcasts. Well, you, you guys may know somebody. So you know how many people's hearing this. But where what have we heard from Colin? We haven't heard anything from Colin. He's underground. He's not a weasel. He's a mole. He dug down deep because a lot of people are looking for him. You better stay there. But Rob, Rob is out, as we illustrated on the drive through here a few days ago. He's out doing interviews, extolling the virtues of this big podcast network company they're going to put together, and they're going to sell stock in this, and they're going to give stock to the people that's on it. In exchange, he doesn't add for the money they're already owed for work they've already done. That was stolen through fraud. That was stolen through fraud, malfeasance, misappropriation. Financial fraud. We're, we're, we're willing to use any of those terms. But anyway, that's what he's doing is he's out doing interviews and ignoring what we're saying because he doesn't want to call attention to it because the podcasting world might know about it and the wrestling world, thanks to us, might know about it. But so far, apparently, the Securities and Exchange Commission has not investigated it well or at all as far as we know, and that's what we're just trying to do. We're trying to call some attention to things to make sure that everything is disinfected with the sunlight. And if they can prove that their deal is on the up and up, then more power to them. But also Rob and Colin and any of your other peripheral stooges, such as, what's his name, Sackbag, the lawyer? Neil Sack Sacker. Neil Sacker. Sacker. What we're saying is out in public here. And if it's demonstrably untrue, if it's provably false, if you claim that we do not have documentation to back up what we have said, and or if you would like to question anything that we have said without documentation that can go into the discovery process and civil litigation, if you're feeling froggy, fucker, hop. Otherwise, we're going to keep talking about you. Even if our listeners have to skip ahead, we're doing it for our own goddamn amusement and also because we're going to do everything we can to make sure that your deal that's supposed to go through next month gets looked at upside, downways, and crossways by people who might know what the fuck's going on. Because you're trying to pull something. That's what I'm saying. Shut me up or prove me wrong, motherfucker. I'm sorry, motherfuckers. They're trying to treat podcasters like like a scummy record label in the 50s would treat a musician. Hey, if you want to buy Podcast One stock or Live One stock or whatever this company's going to be called stock, if they'll steal from us, they'll steal from you. Listen, if a company has a history of owing everyone money and their solution is to spin off part of their company to create another stock, how many times is that going to happen? How many times will that happen? And let's also talk about one of the key things, beyond the financial fraud, which may really be the undoing of Colin Thompson, beyond trying to repay us for the fraud and also force us into a deal with a company no one wants to deal with, beyond all of that, the person who caused all the problems, the person who misappropriated all the funds, the person who was controlling the accounting, he's the one who's going to end up with a job. Not all the people, the press release, go back to the initial press release about the sale of certain assets, go back to looking forward to working with the cast team now joining uh, Live One, and it's going to be great. Uh, the cast team all joined the unemployment line. Same thing in the emails we got. It'll be seamless. You'll keep working with your cast team, but, but start talking to these guys right now. They blew out the team. He screwed over his shows. He screwed over his investors. He screwed over his employees. And he's the one that Rob Allen thinks is worth protecting. 
he's the one, for some weird reason, that Rob Ellen thinks is worth wrapping his arm around. Any other show has a problem getting out of their, uh, getting their RSS feed, let us know. Maybe we have some advice for you. Yeah, and, and by the way, the deals that uh, Rob Ellen is saying are never going to happen again and you can't possibly get took us seven days to get. Very important note there, though. They're impossible to get if you work with a big bullshit company with a high overhead, like a Podcast One. But that's not what podcasting is supposed to be about. Podcasting is supposed to be about independence. Who says, you know what would really make things better? For some people to come in and treat this like, like I said before, scummy record label owners in the 50s. I'm going to get your publishing. I'm going to own the rights to everything. It's all, I'm going to control the money. You'll get it when I tell you you can. Even though you're supposed to get it every month, you'll get it when I tell you you can. That's what this shit is. But that's not what podcasting is supposed to be. These guys are trying to do, in a haphazard way, with less talented people involved, what Vince McMahon tried to do to wrestling in 1984. But it's a different world and it's a different platform. And it only works if people get roped into it like this. You only get your money if you sign a deal with Podcast One. That's the only offer you're getting. You want this money, you have to. It's easy for us to say, fuck you. To be quite honest, Jim and I are financially secure. It's easy for us to say, into the six figures that you owe us, fuck you. Fuck you. You're not going to hold this hostage. It's not so easy for other people. Whether that money is $20,000, whether that money is $100,000. I saw another show. I won't say their name. It's up to them because they didn't name cast. But another show came out saying they're owed $100,000 from their advertising agency. And let's say, if I don't think Sarah Silverman is on a soup line, but another byproduct of this not only people that can't afford it is people that can't get out of it he's got her feed maybe or he's got her goddamn production team that he just pulled away and then they all dispersed when the company immolated or they don't realize that his contracts are bullshit and and are easily <laughs> we're violated a long time violated. ago yeah, yeah we're violated a long time ago and it's one other show and i won't say their name because they haven't publicly said anything but a lot of internet sleuths and listeners of their programs have said stuff about a show, a series of shows, owed $1.4 million from their advertising agency. Turns out it was Cast Media. The word is that that person signed a deal with Podcast One. If you're owed 1.4, well, it's a little less than 500 grand that you're going to get up front if you got the same deal offer that we got. I don't know if he did. Because, quite frankly, we seem to be getting better deals than everyone else does. But that's almost 500 grand. With the promise of another almost 500 grand in stock. And payment over two years. In undefined monetary terms. I wouldn't do that. Again, I don't want to be held hostage. But that's the problem. You could understand why a show like that. Rather not say anything. Rather not fight the system. Rather just get some of their money and then have to deal with the new overlord and hope that somehow it works out better. But it'll just work out the same. That's the problem. Well, and one more interesting point, and we'll move on. You mentioned that show has moved over to Podcast One. How many shows affiliated with cast media have we seen or can we verify or have been announced as moving from cast media to Podcast One? I believe they've only announced two shows, but it's actually like one show and there's a spinoff show. Some more news <laughs> and more news, I think it is, or some news. It's Some news, more news. There's something going on. They there's took some the, news again. They took the deal, apparently. Yeah, so there hasn't been a, a mass exodus of, oh, God, let us in. They're not beating the doors down. No, I mean, as we are recording right now, from what we have been told, Colin is right now in arbitration. He's also right now being sued already. And that's not even counting the class action lawsuit against him and cast media from former employees. And there's more to come. And Rob Ellen's still wrapping his arms around this guy. What the fuck is going on? And by the way, just give us our fucking money. <laughs> you fucking dopes. Or at least give us the accounting. 
So we could really get mad. So, yes, yeah, so we know exactly how much it was you stole from us. We're only estimating so far because we don't trust your figures. Yeah. You know why they're not saying shit? Because the last thing they want to do is sue, and the last thing they want us to do is go to Discovery because we know exactly what to look for and where to look for it. And who to talk to about it. Bingo. But after, what, four weeks from now, let's close with this. After four weeks from now, it won't matter because they'll have issued this stock, right? That's what they're trying to do under the radar without nothing to see here. Look at the pretty monkey on the wall, whatever. They're just trying to get through with that. And again, he knows what's going on, Rob Ellen. Colin knows what's going on. They've heard what's happening here. They've been asked by reporters, from what I understand, about the accusations we've made here, accusations we could back up with documentation, ac accusations we could back up with emails and text messages from Colin himself. So they haven't said boo about any of this, but they're aware of it. The last thing they want is any attention on it because they know what we're saying is fucking true. Everything we have said about this is true. And there's a lot of people they're fucking with. And this isn't going to end. People don't like do this and like, all right, you know what? I fucked with a bunch of people's lives. Now I'm going to be a decent person. <laughs> now it's time to give back to my community for real and care. No. No, it's going to be who do I fuck over next? No, no, no. I'll have you know that I've already seen the press release. Colin Thompson is, is currently opening a halfway house for girls who won't go all the way. Well, we'll see about that. By the way, if you're hearing this on the air, reminder, this has been legally cleared by Stephen P. New. If you have a problem with anything we said in this, have your lawyer call Stephen P. New. 888-692-8084.